Cloud, Comidron, AAG, a system based on Brian computer interface and a drone for county training. Uh, it will present by Monica. Okay, um, hello everyone. Thank you for waiting. So my name is Monica Perales and I'm going to present to you today about Cognidron EEG, which stands for electroencephalogram, which is a system based on a brain computer interface and a drone for cognitive training. So first of all, here's an overview of what I'll be presenting to you today. So I'm going to give a brief introduction on the system and on why it was considered important and relevant to develop. Next, I'm going to talk about the system itself, its objectives, and its general design. Moving forward, I'll talk about the materials and methods that we use to design, develop, and test the system, uh, including the participants, equipment, and scale that we measure. We all, I'm also including the results of, the, um, of this evaluation for assessing the functional suitability and usability of the system. Next, the discussion that took place afterwards. And lastly, I'll be talking about the next steps now that we, we have this base on the system that we'll be implementing um, in the future. Also, I include the, reference of this, the references of this presentation. So first of all, in the introduction of our article, we begin by describing um, mental health in general all over the world. And so we described that mental health disorders can be divided in, both cate in two categories. One of them is common mental health disorders and the other is severe mental health disorders. And you might have heard of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD, which is considered to be the most common behavioral disorder in children. And an issue with this diagnosis is that it often lacks adequate treatment due to its symptoms. They can often be confused by other um, mental health disorders such as anxiety or even depression. And so this is why ADHD today can persist through adolescence and adulthood. Um, fortunately, there have been uh, non-pharmacological approaches that have been developed recently and that uses technological implementations such as serious video games and robotics that have shown to improve behavioral self-regulation of, of the symptoms in children with ADHD. For example, on the left side of the screen, you can see the image of Focus Focus, which is a cognitive training system that uses a headset and it's also a brain computer interface and it includes both biofeedback and neurofeedback for cognitive training. So now talking about the system, Cognidron EG is a game-like design cognitive training system to reduce ADHD symptoms. I mentioned that it is a game-like design uh, uh, training system because we consider one of our hypotheses was that when it includes the features of a video game, it will increase the engagement of the patients to the treatment and it will be fun for them to, to train and they, it wouldn't feel uh, like just therapy or a serious session with a, with a mental health professional. And also Cognidron EG involves both a virtual and a real environment and is designed to be developed using an incremental approach, meaning that this is only the first version of Cognitron that you will be seeing. And in the near future, it's expected to continue in development. In the left side of the screen, you can see Cognitron EEG's virtual environment, which includes a virtual drone and has features, as you can see, such as stars, which represents like the goals the patient must achieve in order to gain more points. And also on the right side, you can see, you can see Cognidron EEG's real environment, which includes the monitor available for the therapist that can see the, the, how the session is going. Here you can see the participant using the headset and the drone flying. As you can see, the drone 
is flying as a, in a reachable distance from the participant uh, on a safe distance. And it is well very suitable for this kind of cognitive training. Now, uh, regarding the objectives of the development of this system, we have that um, the first of them was to provide a set of cognitive training exercises that will improve cognitive attention function in healthy subjects, not only in mentally diagnosed children or adults. So this is an important feature because most of the cognitive training systems that are available in the market are only focused in diagnosed uh, population. The second objective was to maximize the cognitive training's positive effects, meaning that the system by itself wouldn't um, substitute the whole therapy session. And there are also like another features that are needed to to be included in, for the participant to have a complete or iterative like um, development of his or her cognitive skills. On the general design of the system, um, well, by following the ISO or International Standard Organization guidelines, we identified the need for 51 functional requirements and 13 non-functional requirements that were going to be implemented in order for the system to function appropriately. In this image that, well, it's a little bit small, <laughs> you can see that there are uh, several subsystems that correlate to each other uh, uh, through interfaces. For example, uh, there is uh, the database model the emergency landing model, the, also all the managing of information uh, models, for example, the data of the patients, of the therapist, of the tutors, of the children, and all of them function together to create um, what is the PCI as a whole. And for example, you can see from here at the beginning, it, it all starts with the headset, and we could say that it finishes with the drone movement. Um, okay, so an, an, another important uh, feature of the cognitive EEG system was that it is basing the concept of feedback. And there are four types of feedback that were implemented in this system. The first one of them is the drone feedback. which is, uh, by the way, the drone that we implemented was the DJI uh, Velo drone. Also the sound and speech feedback, which provided motivational quotes to the patients in order for them to understand and to be able to know how their, their performance is, is currently being, you know, monitored. For example, when the patient um, took too much time in achieve the goal set, set by the therapist, about 30 seconds, then the page, the system will play a uh, motivational um, quote such as keep going or you can do better or stuff like that. And whenever the patient, on the other hand, um, will achieve the goal in the, in the expected time, it will congratulate the patient. So this is another feature that is like a game so that they earn more points and they, are, they keep motivated intrinsically, not only externally by the therapist. Also, another feedback type that we used was neurofeedback provided by the Emotive Epoch headset, and which is composed by 14 electrodes. And lastly, the therapist feedback. It's important to mention that the system by itself could not replace the therapist intervention because it's the therapist himself or herself who can provide the patient with relevant information on their session. For example, you did better in this, you could improve in this, uh, so that they could understand what they did good in the session and implement it on their daily life so that they can self-regulate their behaviors. Okay, so on the general design as well of the system, we have that this is the um, Cognitron EEG system user graphic interface. So first of all, uh, sensors will be selected by the therapist and the therapist will know the signal quality based on the colors 
provided by the interface. For example, green meaning a good quality signal, yellow a red, um, medium quality signal, red a bad one, and gray non-existent uh, connection. Next. Next on this bar on the right side, you can see that there is also a there is a green bottom and the red bar, and so the red bar uh, represents the the goal set by the therapist. For example, this can be manually set and also automatically set by the system, and so this represents the the brain activity of the patient and the signals that are being transmitted from the headset to the software. And as I said, whenever the patient will achieve the red bar, uh, a sound will be played in order for them to understand that they are doing good. And lastly, as I mentioned before, it, it will all end with the drones movement. Um, at the moment, there are nine predefined flying routines uh, provided by the system from which the therapist can choose from. And so whenever the patient will achieve the goal, one of the movements will, will be played, for example, to elevate, to land, to turn around uh, 90, 90 degrees, for example, to the left, to the right. And this will also be fun to the, to the children to, to see. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the evaluation of the quality of the system. So we conducted a controlled trial um, with three purposes. The first of them was to evaluate the functional suitability of the cognitive drone EEG system. The second one was to identify mood changes in the participants after using, using it, the system. Next, we will compare the user's preferences between the cognitive drone EEG and a commercial BCI that was selected to be the Nexus system. And so this evaluation consisted in two stages. The first one of them was um, to gather a group of children whose parents will agree or consent for them to participate in this study. And when we gather their consent, we will apply some psychological assessments. The first one of them was the Shipley test, which measures intelligence. And the second one will be the neuropsy, which measures attention and memory. And so this will give us the, the reference to be sure that the children will be able to not only understand the instructions, but also to attend it. On the equipment that we used, as I mentioned, um, we used both the Nexus system, which you can see in this picture on the left, and on the right side, you'll be able to see Cognidrome being used in a training cognitive session live. So for example, on the left side, you can see the Nexus hardware. You can see it right here. You can see the, the mini cap that Nexus uses, the participants monitor. In this case, it was a virtual environment that it is space themed such as a video game. And similarly, they have a bar, a threshold bar, from which the participant and the therapist can see the performance of the patient. And on the right side, you can see the, the picture of Cognidron. And it's the same one as I mentioned earlier that was included. You can see the therapist monitor, the drone, the participants, and the headset. Okay, and so regarding the scales for measuring the system, we use some pictorial scales. The first one of them was the pick and mood assessment, which you can see in this picture. It, it includes nine different moods from which the, the patient or the user can choose from, ranging from neutral to boredom to annoyance or excitement. And also, we use the self-assessment mannequin uh, scale that you can see on the right side that measures the pleasure you 
it's not very clear from here, but you can see that it includes a different range of facial expressions from which the patient can choose from. And it measures pleasure, um, arousal, and dominance. And it is worth mentioning that these scales can be used for a variety of purposes, not only in this kind of assessments, technical assessments, but they measure um, the moods of people uh, in a variety of scenarios. Also, we adapted the game experience questionnaire or GQ. We included four of, of them questions, which were originally about their team uh, to explore if they felt challenged, competent or annoyed while using Cognitron EEG or the Nexus. And on the results, we could find that 100% of the functional requirements of the system were implemented. And 96% of them were correctly implemented and then corrected to achieve the 100%. The models that had a areas, areas of opportunity were uh, the managing, managing or, of reports and also the, um, the control of the drone. But as I said, this was all corrected for, in order to achieve the 100%. Another result that we gathered was that 70% of the participants showed a preference uh, towards the Cognitron EG system over the Nexus, which confirms our hypothesis that the drone will be like an important feature that a distinctive feature from Cognitron to other systems so that it was more remarkable for the users to see a drone flying and to feel like they were controlling it with their minds. Finally, the SAM and GEQ showed known statistical differences between the systems. Um, and this suggests that the Cognitron itself it has um, a comparable quality regarding other commercial systems. The discussion that took place afterwards was that the drone, the DJI Tello was found to make participants feel safe. As I mentioned before, it was, it fly on a reachable distance from the participant. And it can also be fly indoors differently from other drones that only can be used on the outside and that can be very loud or can be sell uh, very hard to manage. And on the other hand, this drone was found very effective and very easy to control because of its features. Another point worth mentioning is that a PCI like Omnidron EG could help strengthen the, strengthen the subject's intrinsic motivation for doing this kind of cognitive training. As I mentioned before, this is related to the fact that it included game-like features. And so the mood induced by Cognitron EG tended to fall within the range of major relaxation and major arousal or excitement. And this is a, a great result, meaning that it, it doesn't bother the, the users. It's not annoying. It won't frustrate them very much. So this is a good starting point. And also the non-statistical differences, as I mentioned before, prove that cognitive drones values are equivalent to the commercial systems, such as the Nexus that we used. The next steps on this development are, first of all, to work with a group of healthy children for a more extended, or, or first step, for an extended period to validate the system's efficiency. Because right now it was in a very short period of time, in about a few weeks, that we applied all the tests, all the cognitive training sessions, and gather the results for the data. And the second uh, next step will be to involve a group of children that have actually been diagnosed with ADHD to validate that the system effectively um, improves the mental health of people. And it's not only system effective. These are the references that I included in this presentation. And thank you very much. That is all on my side. Thank you, Monique. Uh, does someone have a question? Okay. 
I, I was wondering, uh, do you think that this same kind of control could be easily ported to different kinds of, let's say, games or, or the control of or, or other kinds of uh, autonomous vehicles or, or things like that? Or do you think it will be necessary to rethink every everything again? Uh, how, how easily it is portable to, to other kinds of applications? Okay, so I think there will be some features that will need to be adapted, but actually it's in the future planned to include a robot now, for example, which is another type of robots that have been used uh, in this kind of sessions. And it could also mean that another um, yeah, vehicles, automated uh, tools could be implemented. Yeah, I think that is very feasible for the computer to do. Thank you. Thank you. Does someone in the audience have another question? Okay. Maybe it's a very simple question, but in how many children was a cosmic drone was proven? Yeah, thank you for asking. I skipped that part. We um, tested the system on 12 children aged from 7 to 14 year old, both girls and boys. Thank you. Okay, I think I don't have more time for another question. Can we proceed with the next talk? Thank you, Monica. Yeah.